All right, welcome back. I'm being joined now by someone who's, a, I want to call it an academic turned momager, um, an African giant in her own right as well, and uh, a ruffle of feathers, if I may use that term. Yeah, a lot of us know her as Mama Berna, uh, but uh, welcome, Bose Ogulu. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me, Ibuka. Do you like that Mama Berna term? Do you like it? Because um... I, I get a feeling you are your own person, and as much as you work mm -hmm. with him, you would also like to be known as your own person. So what do you feel about being called Mama Berna? as a term? It depends on what the term is for. Yeah. I mean, um, I've, I've said it before, you can't hate being called your child's mother. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm proud of him. Yeah. But um, when, when everything you do is limited to that, then it becomes a bit irritating. Yeah. But otherwise, I mean, it's fine. But, you know, if you're talking to me about something I should know about, talk to me because I'm me. Yeah. You know, so that's sometimes, you know, people take I, I, I get people that. take a piss. And, you <laughs> yeah. Know, but speaking, speaking of you as a person, yeah. a lot of us, you sort of came into our consciousness, I want to say around 2015 ish, 2014, 2015, 2016, with Berna. Mm. Before then, he had been in the industry for quite a bit. Uh, we, were you in the scene with him at the time? Because I know you were in the, in the, in the education sector mm. working. When did the transition happen for you? So I'm going to ask you a question. How did I come into your consciousness in 2015? Then I'll know how, I don't to, know. how, to, how yeah, to... I can't remember. I don't know if there was a particular thing that yeah. happened. But, you know, we just started hearing, you know, his mom runs his business. His mom manages him. And it was about four or five years, I think, after mm. we had heard of him mm. that that happened. Mm. Okay, so Bernard Boy started in um, October 2010 yes. in Port Harcourt. Um, and... Um, from even from before he took the name, he asked me to manage him. Okay. So I've always managed him. It was just that um, it wasn't a full time thing for me because I mean I was raising kids. You have to pay bills. You couldn't pay Very me. Very important. You couldn't pay me, <laughs> so I had to do my work. Um, but I mean I signed the first deal um, on his behalf. Um, so I've always been there. Yeah. I've handled most of his bookings. But I wasn't involved in the day-to-day. -day. Um, he was with the label. They had a road manager. Yes. You know, they seemed to be on top of things. So I was just managing him, protecting his interest in, in whatever shape that I could. So but when did you go full-time? I was part of it. And what informed um, that move? I think I went full-time, full-time in 2017. Okay. Um, yeah, 2017, because... Uh, what informed that it was your question. Um, it just became evident that um, the the day to day and the other things I wasn't handling were not going as they should have been. Yeah. So um, and I had more time. I I had fewer kids going to school <laughs> that I had to pay bills for, and um, his business could also evidently grow to pay me. So, I mean, it was a question of, listen, I mean, this guy is, is honestly the most talented person I've met in, in the last decade or more, you know. And um, I just thought, I can't help you with talent, yeah. but I can help you with anything else, you know. And um, fortunately, I, that scene is not new to me. Um, I've been doing business for most of my life. Um, I've been touring uh, for language immersions for most of my life. So it, it, there was just a lot I could bring to the table. And yeah. I just thought, look, if you work hard at this and make it work, it will pay you. It will, you know, your son will grow to his highest potential. And, you know, it will be a win-win for everyone. Yeah. You've said pay twice now. Yeah. And I find that, uh, I mean, this is your son. Yes. And, um, but he's also a talent you manage. Yes. How distinct is that line? And do they conflict sometimes? Because, I mean, with a mother, emotions are involved. But with business, business is business. But you are both. Mm. So how do you draw the line between, okay, this is my son, but oh, I'm working for a pay here. Yeah. Okay. So a manager doesn't really get paid paid. You get a commission of what the artist makes. So if the artist doesn't make money, you don't make money. Yeah. You're not on a salary. Um, also, in life, I've seen that people do not respect people they don't pay. 
you're not, you know, yes, you don't, True. yes, you don't respect someone, you don't pay, you don't value their, um, when I say respect, it's not in terms of family or whatever, but in terms of getting a job done, um, and you're, you're also not committed to something you're not being paid to do, no matter how much you love the person, you're going to look outside that box to make an income. So if you want me to do this 24 hours, that's going to come in. Um, I think I lost your your question somewhere in there. Yeah, you, how, how do you draw the line between modern? How do you draw yeah. the line? Oh, yeah. The first thing was, does it, is there a line of conflict? 100%. 100%. I think that's also why um, I wasn't in the day-to-day -day until, until then. I think by 2015 that you're talking about, um, you're right. I started taking on, you know, uh, bigger roles and, you know, just widening the scope. Um, and the reason I didn't before then, because also there's maturity. Maturity had to come in both ways, not just from him, but from me as well, because I needed to understand that. Listen, the, the, the reason you're privy to this part of his life and this information about him or you're in control about in, uh, of, of this part of his life is because you manage him. Yeah. It's not because you're his mother. You know, so, um, and when your child gets to a certain age, you also respect them and you respect their space. And um, in, in, in that environment, like I said, it's, it's a great talent. So I needed to respect him more as well. That's one of the yeah. things I learned. And, <laughs> you know, just take off the mother hat sometimes and, and put on the, strictly. and say, listen, this, this is work. This is work. And, you know, sometimes, till today, I would say things like, okay, so now this is your mother talking. <laughs> and, you know, and then that's where we go to just because I said. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then, and you know. And then the back and forth happens. Exactly, and the back and forth happens. Is it happens. hard to manage? Yes and no. Yes and no. Um, he is a perfectionist about his craft. Um, so what's his craft? Making music yeah. and performing. We had to get that clear. You know, that's your job. Um, interviews, he hates. Um, all the promo stuff, he hates. He just wants to do music. He just wants to do music. Um, the touring, he loves the performing on stage. Getting there, he hates. Getting there on time, he hates. So, <laughs> so, and you have to handle all yes, that. Yes, and you have to handle and you have to handle all that. I mean, so it, it's those are the parts of it that are not easy. But anyone that's worked with him will tell you when you get him into a studio, um, he's not going to leave until he's finished the songs he set out to do. Even if you're going to stay till the next night, you know that's yeah. so. That has spoiled me a bit because when I'm dealing with other talent, I find that it's not everybody that goes at that pace. So um, for 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 what is his craft, he's easy to manage. But for the other aspects of you know, you must do promo. You must do PR. Um, you need to smile even if you're not happy. You, you know, you, you need to be nice even yeah. if you can't stand this person. Um, you know, so all of that. And tell me again why I need to do this, you know. <laughs> yeah. So that's, and, and he knows what he doesn't want. He gets in the news quite a bit. Mm. Uh, not sometimes, not for not very pleasant things. Mm. You know, he's quite controversial sometimes mm. on social media. Mm. He even tweets sometimes, let me be fast before my manager comes and seizes my phone. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. <laughs> How do you handle those? Because he has those moments. Yeah. And for some of us, it's, oh, okay, we understand everybody's vulnerable. Uh -huh. But it gets him in trouble, quote unquote, uh. sometimes. How do you handle those moments where he just wants to be himself? Forgetting maybe uh, you're burner boy, you know, mm. you're this person. Mm -hmm. Do, does it worry you when he goes off like that? Or when does moments come up? Well, worry is a strong word. Yeah. I'm not, I'm honestly not very big on social media opinions. I, I really don't care, honestly. Um, I'm more interested in what is real and what's happening, you know, before me. Yeah. But having said that, because he's a brand... You, yes, your hackles do get up <laughs> when, because you're not going to change him. He's not going to, if he, if he does a tweet and I do a tweet, you're going to know the difference, you know. Um, and what I've come to learn is that artists are, at least artists like him, they're like tapestry. If you pull at one thread too hard, everything will unravel. So you must make allowances for this person 
being himself yeah. because it is that emotion. It's the same emotion that what you love about him comes from. It's, it's the same place. It comes from the same place. Yeah. So if you push too hard at one thing, you're probably going to lose the other. And, you know, you won't be helping anyone. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, within reason, we, we do what we <laughs> can. I've can, been yeah. known to grab his phone when he was on Instagram <laughs> Live. But um, uh, sometimes I'm like, listen, you talk, they talk. You don't talk, they talk. Yeah. So... We see where he gets it from. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about the Grammy. Congratulations, because you also won. I mean, the team, you, you all worked hard for that. Congratulations mm -hmm. to you, you and, and everybody who works. Sorry about that. Who works on that, the, the, the album mm -hmm. to win the Grammy. Did you see the, the, that one coming? Because a lot of Nigerians were like, yeah, this one is going to win this time. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first one, we were not so sure. The second time, mm -hmm. it was like, he has to win this. It was a great album. Did mm -hmm. you think he was going to win? Because we saw the video you guys celebrated. Mm -hmm. You kind of expected it, didn't you? Yes. And how did you feel? <laughs> did he expect it as well? Yes. Okay. Quite so honest. confident. Yes. Um, yes, because um, it, to be honest, we expected it last year as okay. well. Yes, we expected it last year as well. But um, And we were in LA and all of that. And then it went to Angelique and, you know, all of that. And I'm a great believer in things um, happening in, in good time and season. I, I think you get blessings when you're ready for them. Um, God is not going to make you rich when he knows you can't handle it and he will kill you. You know, so, you know, I, I, I just kind of took it that way. But I knew that there was no, there was nothing else they could be looking for. I mean, it just, I just knew. And so did he, you know. So maybe what I didn't know was the role I would play in it because I co-executive produced it. So I actually probably do get a Grammy. <laughs> yeah, so. so I said yes, thank you. Um, so that, that I didn't see coming. Um, a lot of the fallouts of the Grammy, I didn't, I, you know, didn't see coming, didn't think that far. You know, I just, my thing was, this guy has worked this hard. And, you know, I, I knew he was going to get a Grammy someday. I knew. Yeah. I, I knew since he started music, to be honest. You know, so, um, but the whole... The, the honor that came with it, um, I knew it was, it meant a lot for the country, but um, I didn't think people would react that as, positively. As yeah, especially, you know, the, the organized awards, uh, the River State won and all and of that, and, and people just turning out in such great numbers. I haven't seen it happen for, yeah. for anyone that's not a politician, yeah. except maybe <laughs> Fela, <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, very well deserved. Mm. You talked there about you know expecting to win the Grammy, mm. and a lot of people get that from Burner mm. when he tweets or does the occasional interview. Mm. The confidence, which is what you're saying now, mm. sort of is confused with arrogance. Mm. Do you mind that he's seen as arrogant? Do you mind that you were seen as arrogant with the way you run the Burner brand? Um, I don't mind, honestly. To answer that quite clearly, I don't mind at all. I mean, I think any adjective they want to attach to you is okay. The, the thing is, who are you? you know, and, and, and I think arrogance, I'm not sure. I, I'm, because I'm a linguist, I'm a bit fussy about words. Yes. I, I'm, I, I would, right now, I would love to look at the real meaning of arrogance because I know that there is one that means knowing your worth yes. and carrying yourself as such. If that is arrogance, then it's a good thing. I think pride is what is a problem. If, if I'm not mixing up the words, yeah. I mean. Um, <laughs> but but if, if, if knowing your self-worth and carrying yourself as such is not, I can't, I can't apologize for that. Because I think um, we, we, we were born into a world where we're expected to put our heads down. You know, first, the color of your skin, the color of your passport, uh, for me, my gender. So yeah, I, I, I don't understand that concept of life. Yeah. I, I understand that, you know, if I know something, I know it. And I expect you to realize that I know it. And if you don't realize that I know it, then put me to the test. You know, but, and you prove yourself. And you prove yourself. But if you don't know it, make yourself teachable. And don't be an empty barrel. <laughs> so no apologies. No. Great no. stuff. Uh, <laughs> you, you mentioned the reception there, and I want to talk politics now, because in Nigeria, politics is very, you know, mm. it's very murky waters, mm. if I may use those words. Mm. And, you know, the River State reception happened. 
before that, we had seen the activist burner. Mm. You are also very big on activism with mm. the NSAS protest and all of that. He spoke up very well. Mm. The reception happened. There was a perception mm. by a lot of people that oh, now he's whining and dining with the same leaders. He abused people for not standing up against. You know, how, what were the optics for you with that? You know, with the River State governor, I mean, money was paid, whatever the case is. But did you feel some type of way? Did you get what people were saying? Mm. Because he had made a video saying, Nigerians, you people um, just, you don't speak up enough, basically, for want of mm. a better term. And then we now see him with these same people mm. hanging out. Did you, did you feel some type of way about that? Or did you see the point people were making? I mean... So the first thing is money wasn't paid, okay. by the way. It was paid Just to everyone else but him. Okay. Everyone else who came to perform was paid by him because they were honoring him. He wasn't being paid to be there. You know, he's only, he's only a, for want of a better term, he's only a bastard, my people say, that refuses honor in, in his, his house. father's house. True. You know, so, um, so for me, the, the optics, I, I don't really understand. I didn't pay much attention to it, to be honest. I was too busy which is what the case is, honestly. But it, it, the, the facts are very clear. This man was honored because he got the highest award in his field in the world. He was honored because he brought that award home. Why did he get that award? Making the same music that speaks the truth. So I don't think anybody was trying to buy him to their sides or not. Yeah. I think it is very clear to everyone that the man will always make the music he wants to make. Whether it is for fun or for or, uh, didactics, yeah. you know, whatever, he would continue to do that. No one ever asked him for that. It wasn't a deal. It wasn't a case of him, um, let's honor you, but you will not abuse us again. <laughs> you know, that didn't come into the conversation. Yeah. Um, I, I think in the case of River State, and it, it was very wise that it was done. I was particularly impressed because if any other state had done it before River State, it would have been shocking, you know. And um, so any other person that wants to honor him should invite us and we'll be happy to go. Great stuff. Let's talk about you now before we mm. go. What's I, I was beginning to feel with the Bonner Boy interview. <laughs> um, is is Bosse Ogulu happy um, with the trajectory your life has taken? Um, what's next, you know, for you as a brand uh, besides Bonner Boy or with Bonner Boy? What's going to be happening with this evolution we've seen from the academics? to, you know, this uh, running a business of music and another. We'll take a quick break. Uh -huh. So we'll just ruminate on that. And when we'll come back, we'll round up this conversation. Please don't go away. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Now we're going to conclude our conversation with Bosse Ogulu, uh, Mama Burner. And before the break, I'd ask what was next for you um, with the brand? Well, first you said, am I happy? Yes. I'm ecstatic. I'm very happy as personally and career-wise. I'm happy, you know, because um, for me, I came into this, ma this managing him and all of that as, you know, as a form of sacrifice. Yeah. It was an ambition. Um, and it's, it's just gratifying to know that it's become work that I love and can actually come up with something to leave as a legacy. Um, the next thing was, what next for me? Um, keep doing what I'm doing. Um, hopefully, grow more talent. Right now, I'm big on producers. Um, you know, the other artists we have are there. They're doing their own thing. And, um, you know, we just want to grow it. And my, my real focus is on catalogs belonging to, to us. The to us, great. To us. It, it cannot belong to the artists yeah. for now because you have to pay for it. Um, but I think if it's with us, us being spaceship, you stand a better chance of getting it or getting some cut of it back eventually <laughs> yes. than with somebody in America <laughs> who is just going to flash dollars in your face and, and keep it for much longer. So I look forward to when, when we can have that, you know, standing solid yeah. um, and just breed more artists. Thank you very much. Expanding the, the empire. The more Grammy winners, hopefully. <laughs>
Amen. and just more success exactly. all around. Thank you very much exactly. for all you do. And um, exactly. looking forward to Bonner's album. We know he's working on something. Yes. Looking forward to that uh, dropping whenever it does. Mm -hmm.